First of all, great. Welcome. The good thing about a session like this is nobody needs to be introduced. So we don't have to waste time on anything. So the way we will do this is, I mean, I have some things in mind which I want to talk about. Each of them have something in mind that they want to say. But the format we will do is, first ask you, what would you have like the discussion today? So we'll make sure as we talk, we will come to see what your questions might have. Right? So, please start telling us. Me and we put it on the board. Let me chat today in conversation. What is a law mind that you think we should be talking about today? I mean, for example, you know, when could be what leading to the crash of share prices of tech stocks in the US? What's it about on India? What's, what's about crypto? I mean, it could be any set of things. Where do we go from it? What are the implications? So I'm just revving it up so that you guys start to use it. I think what's uh, what's happening to the funding later in and from the US and what's the likely future. The funding winter in the US now and going forward. And in funding uh, US and India now and future. That's all. Um, should companies in India flip to the US? Is that a story? Yeah. So flipping to the US. Yeah. And flipping back. Some companies are flipping back. Why? Yeah. Flipping to the US and back. Maybe that's one thing. And companies yeah. And why there is a lack of corporate governance in some of the large funded companies, including some of the bankruptcies? You know, the okay, okay. For that. I'll tell you the answer. No, I think. I think <laughs> it's important. Okay. Is there a dent in the market for flip companies you know, in the US? Sorry? Yeah. Is, there a, is, there a, is there a dent in the market conditions? Like for customers buying SaaS software in the US? You know, for the so if, if the something that is split to the US is a SaaS company, yeah. uh, is is there a likelihood in the current scenario that there's a lot of big sales in the US? Is the market just market, market basically shrunk for SaaS companies? That's what it is. For SaaS companies, is it only? Nothing. US market for SaaS companies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so why uh, US Indian tech, uh, tech companies are doing well in IPO, like Zomato, then Paytm, Dasha has been can. Uh, what's the future of IPO as exit? So that's part of the trash of the stage Yeah. that I was saying. So, uh, so uh, I would like to know, is there a decoupling of sorts between the investor sentiment of private investors versus public investors? Sorry? Is there a deep of that we are seeing as an output which is private and public market investors? What type of stock? What type of stock? Okay. So, uh, the impact of the recession that we see globally, the recession will be different for India versus US. Yeah. So, <coughs> the impact of the recession. The recession. So, then there is a recession in France. US and India. Are we seeing the end of uh, cash burn models? Just uh, given the pandemic experience in investing in early stage companies, will they scale up? Like, I don't know if it's a legitimate concern or not, but what one often sees is that once founders raise a large check, a large could be for somebody could be 10 million or somebody could be 100 million. Like it seems like, you know, of course, all this is coming with Bharat, but it's happened to many others where the governance or something, few VCs where they have auditors on board. What is happening? It is false. Not corporate governance, but 
capital allocation mode as investors, how do you control that? I think Sanjeev and you recently mentioned about the air condition mode in Nokri. Right, I found that very interesting. So something a bit more on that, like how do you deal with founders no, as so they're a larger and larger check? Just, just making sure the interests are aligned. Cash, cash handling. We should start, otherwise we won't have yeah. to start. Yeah. 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 So what are the good areas of investment? Uh, any particular sector, you take health tech, anything? It's a broad one. And plus uh, any stage of investment. India is inflation. 10, 11 percent inflation means all of a sudden you know, your salary is not going that far anymore. The, the gasoline prices have more than doubled. The U.S. economy is built upon this cheap energy. The energy was not cheap anymore. You can't stop driving, yeah, but you're spending a lot more money. So, so a Fed stepped in, you stop you know, printing the money, start raising the interest rates, you know, and uh, so, so, so we're going through this process of direction. Yeah. So, so, I don't know how to, add it to make it even, things even worse. You know, the COVID response in China was a lockdown. And, and, and that, you know, really disrupted the supply chains. You know, all of a sudden you couldn't buy chips, automobiles, you couldn't manufacture automobiles because chips are not available. So I think there was a wild, wild party going on. Free money. Yeah, you, yeah, if you go back and look at what people are saying, well, there's a new monetary theory. You can spend infinite amount of money without charging inflation. I don't know if any of you, you know, I wrote an article on that, you know, the new free lunch theory. I don't know if any of you read that one. Yeah. You have to, you, know, you can't be spending money, not producing goods. You're sure to have inflation. And, and it got aggravated by the Chinese lockdowns, then it got aggravated by the you know, Russia and Ukraine. So I think, yeah, US, but in spite of all that, US reaction is only 20%, right? US market has not crashed. I have been through the US market where corruption has been 70, 80%, more than once. So market has not crashed, yeah. In spite of all that, U.S. is still trading 230, 240,000 jobs every month. In spite of that, the U.S. economy, after shrinking for two quarters, grew this last quarter. But what so, tech, so tech mid, stocks? Mid uh, that, you know, uh, it's very hard to figure out what is going on. So, uh, Kanwar, just an added question before I ask Sanjeev. So the tech stock seems to have, seem to have corrected yeah. a bit more than that. Yeah. And the second related is, so public markets is one issue, which what is yeah. what you mentioned, <clears throat> but it's also happening on the private yeah. investments, markdowns. Yeah. Well, so by, by the way, <coughs> in U.S., you know, they think about labor force participation. You know, how many people who are eligible to work are working? The labor force participation dropped very rapidly. Somehow, five, six million people disappeared. You know, who were working, you know, just disappeared. You know, you know, the, you know, whether they retired or you know, went back to Mexico or, or whatever, right? So, so you have this other problem in the US. Now, coming back to uh, what will happen, what's happening, you know, at the average revenue per employee for Facebook, Google, and you know, other companies, Apple, used with a couple of million dollars. This is revenue per employee. So they were lavishing you know, salaries and perks on their employees. The average salary of a person working with Google or Facebook was half a million dollars. <laughs> you know, fresh college graduates were making 200 to 250,000 dollars and they were sorting up all the available talent. So when the market started to slow, the models of Facebook and Google are ad-driven. 
and the ads are dropped by almost 30%. Yeah. If I'm not able to produce automobiles, because I have chip shortage, I don't need to advertise automobiles. You know, so, so, so when their revenue dropped, all of a sudden, you know, they, they had this bloated, expensive workforce. And, and that is causing all this, all, all this layoff. But that number is still very small. 100,000 people that laid off in the Bay Area. 100,000 in the Bay Area of population of six, 7 million people. Yeah, Bay Area does not have a massive unemployment problem. But, you know, the high, you know, good times are not there anymore. So I want to you know, leave at that, you know, the, but if I go back to the startups, startups are feeling very good. Yeah, you know, they are able to get people without, you know, they weren't able to pay half a million dollars, you know, to the, to the employees. Yeah, you know, but now, you know, they, are, they are getting people, you know, rents, rents have come down, way down. So, you know, so my basic sense is uh, this high-end re recession, you know, is not impacting the startups yet. It's that the value expectations are down. Yeah, you know, you know, Sonson and uh, you know, the guy from Tiger, what was his name? Felix or? Yeah. 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 Sonson, are you ready for this thing? Last $150 billion. He was the only game in town who was writing those big chats. Nobody could match him. And if you are used to getting those big chats from Sonson, and you have developed you know, a nice spending habits, there's nobody else who's going to give you that kind of money. So, so we are, you know, I expect to see more traction in the US and in India. Uh, you know, on, on that side. Thanks. No, I was just looking at the Sensex. It's 62,000. It's uh, not very far from its maximum ever. Uh, how, there, must, there must be many non-Sensex stocks to have corrected. Uh, I think uh, a lot of the headlines are being made by the tech startups that listed and are now trading way below their all-time highs. But the XX Zomato, the IP over at 76, the stock is at 64. It's 16 percent down from the IPO price. It's massively down from its all-time high, but but Zomato did not raise at that price. The market took it up. Market took it down, right? I think what is clear in some stocks is uh, they went public uh, on the euphoria of tech on this new uh, listing rules which permitted loss-making companies to go public. Uh, but when push came to shove, the Indian market to some extent reverted to mean. And say, so if you're a loss-making uh, tech company, you know, we'll only tolerate so much. Uh, so tech startups have to break even within the next two, three years, which we, I, was the plan anyway uh, for many of these companies, in order to justify the price at which they listed, or perhaps even higher, right? And we have seen the Zomato stock respond every quarter. Uh, you know, as burn goes down, uh, stock price moves up. So loss-making tech startups, uh, I would say a challenge right now. Otherwise, the, the Sensex is doing fine. Uh, Non-Sensex stocks have corrected. But uh, look, when you, when you print $5 trillion, everybody looks smart, right? Uh, I mean, uh, and that's what the Fed had done since uh, March 2020. Just, I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about 15 years. I'm just saying since March 20, $5 trillion, right? It causes asset price inflation everywhere, including in India. At the same time, if money is not going to China anymore, it's coming out of China, some of that will come into India. Right? So you did see a bubble. Right? Now, now, for 15 years, since 2007, the Fed had been printing its way out of trouble for 14 years. 2021, and they took a decision that, okay, that phase is over. Uh, we have got to fix inflation. And uh, not only did they raise the interest rates, they actually contracted the balance sheet. The contraction of balance sheet, uh, convert, correct me wrong, has never happened before. So this is kind of uncharted territory. So there was quantitative easing for 14 years, uh, post, uh, post Lehman. And now suddenly there's quantitative tightening. And that had never happened earlier. So we are in somewhat uncharted territory. And this contraction in liquidity, you know, will impact markets, did impact markets. But I'll leave something. To my mind, and I, I have not done the precise analysis, but to my mind, India has 
even the tech stocks have corrected less than uh, the tech stocks in the US. Okay? And I have a hypothesis. I could be wrong. You see, India mein jo paisa hai, wo captive paisa hai. Wo bahar ja sakta. Right? Okay? I, I, I don't, therefore, now real estate is down. Uh, at least a, a real estate is coming back, but as a, this while investing in real estate is not happening the way it was till 2007-8, right? Uh, gold is flat, crypto is over, every rates are down. Where will money go? It will go into mutual fund ships and what's going to happen and that will keep the market up. So India has not faced the kind of correction in public markets that uh, barring a few stocks, uh, which, uh, you know, the, the way the US has, and that's because we have money and it can't go out of the country. It's so, money. So Sanjeev, just a related piece. Because one of the questions here uh, was about that. So saying, is it going to be difficult for high burn companies to raise money? Oh, yes. I mean, look, uh, it's going to take a very gutsy investor to say, to burn karle, yaar. You know, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, uh, it ain't happening. Okay, investors are discerning. Investors are going to be asking many more questions that they weren't asking earlier. How many of you know how the IPO process works? You know how the IPO process works? Company decides to go public. It wants to sell 10% of its shares to the public. It says, I want to sell 10% of my shares to the public you know, at this price. The bankers, bankers draw out and they you talk to the investors, you know, there's a roadshow, marketing of the shares, and say, if I was to price a share at 100 rupees, how many would you buy? If I was to price the shares at 200 rupees, how many you would buy? If I price the shares at 90 rupees, how would you buy? So they, it's at the boot building. I need to sell 10% of the share, let's say 10 million shares. They come up with a number, A, if I price the share at $100, I, I can sell 10 million shares. But that doesn't work. I need to be able to sell twice as many shares as Tapri wants to sell. Minimally, minimal. Maybe as many as three times shares. Because if everybody who has given shares at the IPO sells, I need to have a demand left in the marketplace to buy. Yeah. So what happened, yeah, 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 people like uh, yeah, Vijay Shetra Sharma, he was fixated on 20 billion. There was not enough demand at $20 billion valuation. They brought big guns, you know, the, uh, the oracle of Omaha. Yeah. They brought the investors who were not ever invested in the. But there was no demand left behind. When the people who got the shares tried to sell, of course, prices plummeted. The word for uh, IPO is that you float the stock. You turn up with the shares, hey, I can sell everything, I, twice as many shares that I have at 100 rupees. I need to now price about 10 to 15% below that number. So the, when I dip the shares to people, it floats up about 10 to 15%. But that's where the, you know, and if anybody sells, there's enough people who step up to buy. So, so, so what happened here, yeah, they took the last penny, our last pesa, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter, you're selling 10% of your company, you still own 90% of your shares, and, and, and you are fixated on 20 billion valuation. You, you know, you know, it, it, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. You know. So you know, eventually, you need to let the shares find their own price, but the banters, you know, I've been through six IPOs, I was at the roadshow for Atlan IPO. The whole idea is you find the a price at which you can sell two to three at shares that being, are being offered, and you discount that by 10 to 15%, and that's the price at which you do out. And, you know, and that's not happening in some of these deals. Yeah. Okay. Let me switch tax, because I think this kind of covers some of the questions around the models, burn companies, whatever. Uh, what are you saying? How do investors evaluate? Uh, startups now. Is that related to the same burn issue? I mean, any any difference in how 
you would evaluate a startup now, except for the fact that the high oh, burn, well, except that the high burn yeah. companies. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, so, I am a seed level investor. I invest in new entrepreneurs, first money in. I expect 70 to 75 percent of my investment to fail. Yeah, I expect 70 to 75 percent of my investment to fail. You know, I have done slightly better, but not much better. So the winners have to give me a lot more, 40 ads, 50 ads. So the 25 percent of the of the companies we survive, they have to give me on average 40 ads or so, so I can make. The, the, the role for investors is between 10 ads of your investments. Yeah. So it all depends upon the initial valuation. So, so let me give you a very simple story. I am sitting in my office, this entrepreneur watching. I love, it. love his idea. I want to invest. It, it was a million dollars. I said, ah, OK, I'll give you a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, what do you, how much of the company you will give me? Five percent. Oh, your idea is worth nineteen million dollars. I get five percent for a billion dollars. You know, let me think about it. A certain certain guy comes into me. I love him just as much, just as much. I offer him a million dollars, and he, he says, "I'll give you ten, ten percent." Better, much better. The third guy walks into my office. I love him just as much. Yeah, for a million dollars, he offers me twenty. Percent. Which one do you think I would invest in? For me, the first company, if I invest in there, it will have to be four times as big to make my 40 ads. He has to execute without any flaw to be able to raise more money. So, so let's look from the entrepreneur's perspective. In the first days, he owns 95%, and investors own 5%. In the second days, he owns 90%, investors own 10%. In third case, he owns 80% and investors own 20%. There's not much difference between 80% owner and 95% owner, but you are demotivating and making it harder for people to invest in you. So I am a very disciplined investor. Oh, you want that million dollars at 5%? Go find a fool, bigger fool than me. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I want to have, every time I make an investment, a possibility of making 40 yachts. This is seed level. This is the first money in a raw entrepreneur. If I'm not able to see myself to 40 yachts. So, so even during the, all this exuberance, irrational exuberance that we saw, I never wavered. There was plenty of deal flow. There was plenty of deal flow. And uh, we, we'll see, or, you know, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I have been termed cheap guy, and I love to be a cheap guy. Okay. Sanjeev? Yeah, I think, look, just a clarification, when he says he expects 70% of the companies to fail, it does not mean that he's a careless investor, and he'll go behind a company that's likely to fail. No, I mean, I, 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 at, the, at the time when he goes in, every company should show him promise of 40x. Some of them may not work out. That's life. But he was convinced it could be 40x, and that's why he went in. So every company. Yeah. Okay, just to clarify that. Life will ensure that 50 to 70 percent fail. That's, that's, that's the nature of the game. Right? If the success rate was more than that, then he's probably got a 20x fund. Yeah. yeah. So they want to clarify that. So look, the questions. We are not changing the questions that we are asking because we always ask these questions because we are very much cash flow, revenue, profit focused, always have been. Uh, it's just that uh, there's a new thing being added. What is the amount of money this company will need in its life before it turns a profit? And what's the likelihood that they'll be able to get some of it from other investors? Can you assess that? And you know, if we don't get a good answer there, we get worried that are we, we like them to ditch the company and it'll fail, or we go in solo for the first three, four rounds. Now, solo for the first three, four rounds, you know, you're out on a limb and a prayer, and you don't know if you're right. right? 
uh, and you may end up uh, putting a lot of money and it evaporates <coughs> and you're left alone. Having said that, having said that, we were solo in the first four rounds in Zomato and we won big, right? So it's not that we've not done it before, but in this environment, uh, the kind of burns people are racking up, I would be very apprehensive of going in solo uh, beyond a point. No, I would just say that, you know, this irrational exuberance, this nice term we discovered in 2000, I think 2001, uh -huh. There were companies who were saying that we're not making a profit and it's not very clear when we will. But that's a model that ain't going to get funded. So, so long, nobody expects that you're making a profit today. But unless there's a line of sight and unless there's clarity that your unit economic model will lead you there, in today's market, I don't think you should expect any serious funding to happen. Yeah, so I have no trouble going in solo. Yeah, because as a seed level investor, you're not worried about uh, the market. Sorry, let's clarify. I have, we have no problem going solo in the first round, but first four rounds going solo is a, is no, a no, 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 no. I'm not about that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no I, I do not want to put a dollar more than I put in the first round. I want somebody else to value. So, so, so let, let me, my approach is I am no, I want, uh, I, we do in our new approach, we give you $3 million as a, a first round seed level money, you know, 18 to 24 months worth of burn. And we tell them, we don't want you to build a company, we want you to def, you know, get to some you know, financeable milestones. Yeah, between you and me, we agree. If you achieve this, this, and this, you know, some, some investor will put money into you. So we, we, we do the, you know, and I never want to invest another dollar. You know, because see, that's when you're starting to fool yourself. You know, I, d I give you enough capital, you know, let's spend 18 months worth of development, whatever we need to do, let's take it to the investor. And that's the point I made earlier. If I end up having the high valuation, $19 million to start with, this guy has to achieve attitude perfection. For me to make two ads of my step up of you know, my initial money, company will have to be worth $40 billion pre-money next round. Yeah. And uh, so I am very disciplined. You know, I, I want to give you $3 million at $7 million pre-money is our, our you know, sweet spot, you know, 10 million post money. And, and let's see, we get to some places, you know, we have the product put in, we have two, three, four white customers, we have some, some proof points that this stuff is working. And let's take it to the, uh, uh, the new set of investors. Two to three ads is what I'm looking for. And that, for the risk I took as early. You know, and, and, you know, 10 million post money becomes 20 to 30 million pre money. So will this thing be worth that much, you know, if you meet these milestones? So, so the door is to have a yeah, very well defined. I don't want you to be doing anything other than meet those financeable milestones. Let's define, yeah, do we have an MVP? Do we have you know, two, three customers? Yeah, do we have, yeah, yeah, we agree, yeah, we, but we are an entrepreneur. And, uh, and I give you enough I, cash to last. You don't have to do raise money from anybody else for 18 to 24 months. You know, you're not, not wasting any time. And so, you know, it's a, uh, Next round has been done somebody other than me. Yeah. So let me just switch tacks to one of the other questions, which is there in more than one of the points. Uh, they're kind of related. This whole issue of corporate governance in companies as they get more and more money. That's happened in the US. Uh, it's happening in India. There's an issue, as you said, of capital allocation. <clears throat> which is not necessarily corporate governance, but still relates to how well money is used. Uh, I would add a third one, which hasn't come up here, is founders taking out uh, a lot of secondaries and reducing their stake in the company. So I, mean, I don't know if you can say it's corporate governance or ethics, but fundamentally, why would a founder, <coughs> why would a founder do that? 
So there are a bunch of related yeah. questions that come up. Would like your comments, both of you. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I do want to you know, pick up the news from you know, this morning's paper. Off business, what is it? Yeah, off business has yeah. raised a bunch of money. So they are, they are trying to raise $150 million at $8 billion. This is their 11th round. You know, they're profitable, company, small profits. You know, they're drawing, they, they are 2,000 crore in revenue. You know, 2,000 crore in revenue, you know, let's say $80, you know, that's a, a, about 25, yeah, 200, yeah. 25 billion, yeah, two, 250 billion dollars. They done eight billion dollar valuation, 32 times the revenue. Low margin, huh? low margin company. But low margin company, even if they double, triple, for me to draw into my valuation, you know, typically a valuation of a company is maybe 20, 30 times your earnings, your base money, your growth rate. This is 30 times, 32 times your revenue. So, yeah, I said, well, 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 yeah, profitable company, but we'll see, uh, we'll see. I, uh, I, I turn back to the, uh, you know, the fundamentals. Can everybody make money? Can entrepreneurs make money? Can investors make money? Yeah, you know, and for that to happen, you need to have newer set of investors coming after you to give the money, yeah. And, you know, if they, if, if, if by, you know, you know, we were investors in Policy Bazaar, yeah, along with the Sanjeev. You know, when uh, Sonsan came in, you know, we could make about 10, 12 times our money by selling. So we sold half, half our shares to, you know, in that round of financing about eight, two years ago. You know, I said, hmm, his valuation is so high, I, you know, for us to make money beyond that one, you know, we'll see. So, and then when they had the IPO, and yeah, we were locked up, and we were unlocked, we sold the shares, half of our share, yeah, whatever we could sell, at about 1,400 rupees per share. Share price went down to about 350? Yeah. Yeah, the people said, you don't believe. I, I believe, but, you yeah, know, I believe, I liked, uh, yeah, Policy Bizarre, wonderful company. Wonderful company, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you yeah, know, the, the laptop is over now, and uh, your share prices have bounced back to 450, 475, something like that, right? For it to get back to 1400, it will be maybe a couple of years, three years? I would imagine so. Yeah. Yeah, so we sold you know, RB2 at 1400 last year. So there's a time value of money. There's a time value of money. For me to hold on to shares for four rats and get the same price that I got now. Just doesn't make sense. Right? Yeah. So uh, tell me about the governors. You know, partner. There's a partnership. But there should be a partnership between investors and entrepreneurs. You know, and uh, yeah, I've seen. You know, it, when entrepreneur starts to become a little, yeah, little uppity. Yeah, investor. Yeah, a smart investor should what? These are these people that the valuations they do, you know, because somebody's changing, you know. If you saw my, my quotes in money, money control, right? Yeah. You know, to me, Tider and Son Son were culprits. I know, I knew Son Son when he was nobody. He was <coughs> our partner for Nobel. When we set up you know, Nobel Japan, it was Nobel Son Son partnership. Yeah. He won the lottery, he invested in uh, Alibaba, $25 million. That became $250 billion, 10,000 times the money. So he thinks he can repeat that. This whole approach was, I'll draw that 10 more, yeah, things. So he has lost out of the $250 billion, 150 is down. His fund is down to 100 billion. I mean, South Pet's valuation is down to 100 billion. And today's paper said that he's stepping in to buy more shares because everybody's selling. All the other shareholders are selling. So his ownership in the company is joined up because 
none of his own shareholders believe in the company anymore. So, so he's on lose on this front also. So yeah, eventually, companies have to produce profits, have to show the growth with profits, yeah, for them to be worth something. 11 round of funding, borrowless pit for financing, very flabby, uh, you know, unfit you know, organization, does not produce wealth. Any comments on this corporate governance, capital allocation as more and more funding comes? Yeah, the whole, there's an old uh, thing I learned 20 years ago. Job is tight, hota hai, tabhi aapko paisa ki hai. and companies that companies that raise too much money too soon, too easily, tend to invest it suboptimally. Right? It's when money is scarce that you really think hard about allocation. This or that. Right now it's this and that and that. Well, uh, that's probably different. Let's say with the companies in a sense. Yeah, okay, so, so uh, financing is done this way. I am fool to be investing in your company, but a bigger fool will bait me out. <laughs> yeah, so the whole thing is a bigger fool theory. And when Sun San and Tiger came on the scene, they were the biggest fools. But there's no bigger fool than them. And now when you have this share, who, who will they sell to? So let's go back so, to the so, 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 so when, so when you, uh, when you have too much money in your <coughs> pocket, you know, it tends to burn a hole. Uh, okay, and it requires a lot of discipline then to say, you know what, I'll hang on to cash. I won't spend it in a hurry. I'll sp I won't spend it foolishly. And I think uh, it's really how you manage yourself then that will determine what happens when the, uh, down when, when, when the downturn happens. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, by Warren Buffett. Uh, when the tide goes out, we know who's swimming butt naked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, no, no, go ahead. Finish right. it. You know what I'm saying? When the, yeah, the tide of the money goes out, yeah, yeah, you are exposed. Yeah. The, it's not that harsh a winter yet. Whether it will get really harsh or not, I don't know. But I'll tell you, Exodus, Remunitation, was worth thirty billion dollars in October, November of year two thousand, and it was worth zero in March of twenty twenty, two thousand one. My ownership in that dropped ninety percent. I was trying to sell as fast as I could. Yeah. So, yeah, I had over thousand x return on my investments, and I did not. Yeah, because they never made money. They never learned to make money. When the winter set in, the dot term winter set in, you know, they could not survive because they were burning tons of cash and uh, they could not raise money on Wall Street at all. They were a public company. So I just wanted to say that uh, my investments you know, eventually you know, returned 87 times of my money and I for about a year felt real stupid because it was worth 1,000 at one time. Yep. 1,000 at one time. Yep. Yeah, and then after a few years, you know, when I started to turn down and I not, yeah, yeah, put, yeah, become a little bit more philosophical, most people will give their right arm to that 87 times the money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, so, okay. so, so the size is no protection. Yeah. Size is no protection whatsoever. But coming back to corporate governance, so, and this whole idea of founders trying to take a lot of money out early through secondaries. Uh, because we've seen lots of issues in corporate governance. So there's a question that does get asked, saying, OK, so what were the investors doing? What was the board doing? What's the audit committee doing? Uh, all these questions get asked. Yeah. I'm not sure enough gets asked of saying, what's making the founders do this? For example, uh, uh, no, let me just complete uh, Kanwalia thing. So for example, we blame all our old industrialists uh, 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 to say that they were the companies, they would siphon money out of the companies. They would get rich while the companies would fail. And they all have a bad name, all the old investors. I find today that many of our new age investors are doing exactly the same. Yeah. Flying private jets at, with your investment, 
uh, all kinds of shady transactions, related companies. So I just wanted to understand what's your sense of what's making it happen? Because I could understand yeah, when, the, in, so when the old industrialists did yeah. that, it was understandable because yeah. the government taxation rate, just one second, was yeah. 97%. Yeah. So if you were smart, why would you pay 97% yeah. tax? Yeah. But so that's not there today. Yeah, Vijay, Vijay Shetar Sharma bought a bungalow in Lutius Delhi for $190 million. None of his investors made a dime. So what's driving this was my no, issue. No, He's just, not just, the only just, one. Tell, just telling you, uh, there used to be a clause in every financing that we either all sell or nobody sells. You know, we all have cross sale rights. Now, power equation shifted when Sonson and Tyler came on the scene. They didn't care. They didn't care you know, you know, if you sold. They, you know, they wanted to have owner, ownership, so they will take your, you know, sh your shares at, on top of the, what, what they bought from Trumpley. But we, as a rule, do not, do not let any entrepreneur take a dime out of the Trumpley until we all can take the money. So true sale is a class in every investment we do. If one person sells, everybody has a right to sell. The same, yeah. If you have somebody who's gonna buy it, yeah, ten percent of your shares, we all say, I I want to take my yeah, I own twenty percent of the so I, you know, I want my share of that. So uh, true sale agreements have disappeared in India, it appears to be. Yeah, but they all sell, they have to sell at the same price. Same price? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true sale agreements are if there is a demand for the shares, private shares, we all get to participate in that round. You know, yeah, Kanul. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, uh, so I'm uh, saying uh, no matter whether. Uh, Kanul, uh, the clauses still exist in each and every agreement. Uh, but you're right, the power equation has shifted. Power equation, that's, that's the, the, uh, if entrepreneur tells the investor, hey, if you don't let me do it, I'll do, take the money from somebody else, and it's, and the alternate source is available, then you're powerless, right? Yeah. So, you know, by the way, even in the U.S., there was a you know, certain, well, tell certain market, you know, you know, people like uh, Uber and you know, Airbnb, their sales were trading on the certain market. And uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Nobody should be able to get rich until everybody gets rich. Yeah, so that's the bottom line, I guess. Let me uh, pick up one of the other items over there. has been at it for 10, 12 years. Uh, in case of Vijay Shetar Sharma, he's been at it 20 years, right? So maybe yeah, we should let him sell 5% of his holdings yeah, so, so he can live and pay. But, but it should be moderate um, amount. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I'll answer that. Yeah, yeah. So, so listen, yeah. I'll tell you. So, yeah. I think I think uh, no, I'll, I'll I'll explain. Yeah, I'll explain. See, you got to look at it each company separately, and yes. see what are the circumstances. Now, if a company has raised a lot of money in its history uh, because of competition, it was because because there were big big uh, investors chasing competition, right? Uh, and he was forced to raise, and therefore he diluted himself down to a very low number. Uh, then perhaps uh, you know the company will be at risk if the if the founder does not have enough skin in the game, right? And then and second, if there's a there's a compensation committee which does not include the management, okay, uh, and therefore it's been t taken by uh, other people, right? And then if it's been disclosed before the IPO, and therefore people who are coming in in the IPO know very well this is going to happen, right? 
there may be a case being made that this is actually protecting the company for the future because the founder will stay interested. Yeah. You, you, you dip shares to founders when they have been diluted to the point you know, where they might what? and simultaneously get ESOP. Uh, I that's, don't think... That's where you were going so, so part of it is like, I, I understand it's it may be diluted down there. But in a lot of these cases, what happens is you actually have second reason where you sold it. You use that money to separately to invest in other companies. And then as you're going public, it's disclosed. It's all in public domain. It's in the RHP. There's nothing which is not told to investors. But from the VC or the investor sitting in there, your equity is there. Right? No, you're, you're, you're diluting yourself. Yeah, your, your, point, your point is... You've been compensating yourself. Why should that happen? No, I understand. So why, so why should that happen? No, it's, a, it's about protecting the company going forward. No, 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 no. What he's saying is that's fine. The shareholding is down. You want to protect the company, so you give me ESOP. But at, the guy says, yeah, give me some more ESOP because I'm also selling out. Now, I don't want to be deluded, I want to sell, and I want to build my portfolio both. Uh, as a, as because a, I'll use, and not for me, I'm going to use that uh, money to invest in other companies. So, a good late stage winter is required. <laughs> <laughs> a good late stage winter is required. So, a winter, a start market winter instills discipline, fear of God. Money is not available. You know, and, you know, like I said, Son Son lost 60% of, of his valuation because he was foolish. He's still worth $100 billion, so you can be too sympathetic to him, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but but uh, I remember when he went to see, what was the guy's name at uh, WeWork? WeWork. Uh, uh, Adam Newman. Adam Newman was looking for $50 million. And he tells Adam, I'll give you $500 million at the same valuation that you're looking for $50 million. And there's more money there. Don't spend it fast. We want you to draw really rapidly. And he ended up putting two or $3 billion or $4 billion into the company, right? Yeah. So I'll tell you, I have seen this happen. Yeah few times, but nothing like uh, what this guy was doing. Yeah, this guy was re really, yeah, really crazy. Yeah, and you know, his theory was money capital is a differentiator. And uh, I'll give you so much capital that nobody will be able to compete with you. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I heard him speak in that language. Money is one of the factors, it's not the main factor. So some of these entrepreneurs, you know, they were swept off their feet by, by him. You know, Adam says, you know, he tells me spend, you know, I'll give you $500 million instead of 50 for the same valuation. You know, why won't I take it? And he's telling, uh, telling me to spend all that money and there's more to be, you know, more to be had. So you spoil. You spoil the, uh, the thing. You know, that's the reason I said these as a culprit. You know, I, I remember these stories. You know, I remember these stories. So you know, it is, uh, India needs a direction. Late stays, you know, bad habits have to be squeezed out. And we'll see. Yeah, honest, goodness, company. By, by the way, you know, we raised my startup raised two million dollars in 1982 for half the company. We, you know, we got two million. I didn't care about delusion. I was very happy to have opportunity to pursue my dream. Indians were not getting funded. They were not known to be entrepreneurs. Somebody offers me $2 million for half the company. Yes, sir, we'll take it. We raised a total of $7 million in three rounds. When we went public, we had uh, oh, roughly about four of the seven in the bat. The entrepreneurs, I mean, the investors who came in the earliest round made 100 times their money. The John Barsh, you know, you know, who gave us that to be in us, he made 100 times his money. You know, we did very well. You know, it's not the valuation that matters, it's how fast you create value that matters. So, you know, the funders are not clear. Funders are not clear. We'll see. You know, markets have a way of directing. 
and uh, yeah. So I think Sanjeev, I'll ask you to chip in because this thing on value versus valuation, and you've talked often also about customer money and investor money. So I just want you to repeat that, and then I want to pick up one more thing before. Uh, so I just want to apologize that Sanjeev and I both have a board meeting call. Not board, it's a committee meeting call of InfoEdge. So we will disappear before 5 o'clock. Raman is going to take over. And Raman with a mic, you can imagine what it's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just to do that, so let me try and do one. I'll just have Sanjeev say that, and I just want to pick up one more thing over there, which is about companies flipping to the US and the reverse flip, and, and the rest can still go on. Yeah, so you know, I just want to repeat something that Ram Shriram had told me. Ram Shriram had, uh, was a shareholder in our company uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago. And he had said, Sanjeev, just remember, great companies are capital efficient. Oh, yeah, that's the hallmark of great companies is capital efficiency. Right? So, how much money do you think Google raised before its IPO? Before they went public. How many? Before they became profitable. How much money do you think they raised? They, 25 million. They, uh, no, no. they were profitable after they raised $2 million. And they decided to go public. And they raised $23 million more to top up you know, as a as imagine in the round. They did not need it you know, because they were very profitable after the $2 million. So they did raise 25, but the other. They, needed, they needed two. Yeah, they needed two, right? So why, do, why don't you give the numbers on Nokri? Yeah, so Nokri, we raised. Uh, one, we raised uh, 7.3 crores, uh, which at today's exchange rates is under a million dollars. And uh, we made losses for two years, and we came back to profit, and we still had uh, two crores in the bank. So essentially, we had spent 5.3 crores uh, to, uh, you know, to, to make a profit. And uh, you know, so Google Google's market cap is $2 billion. 23 were extra. Our market cap is Five crore money. The two crores are extra. Uh, it was cushion. So, so, so you know, capital efficiency has suddenly come or will suddenly come back into vogue oh, yeah, yeah. with with this uh, funding contraction. Yeah, it's, uh, our Microsoft raise total one million dollars. That's it. They raise only one million dollars. So, I, I guess it's a question of how do you define a business? And I have a simple definition. I said. You know, you have a business. If you if you have a product or a service that people value, willing to pay for, and you can make money at that price. So I'll just elaborate on that. Okay. If you don't have that, you don't actually really have a business. So I'll yeah. elaborate on that. See, what I have been saying for a long <clears> time <throat> is that the customer's money <coughs> is better th money. better than the investor's money. Because if you're getting the customer's money and you're getting it repeatedly and you're getting it at a, at a price that's higher than your cost, then chances are you have a viable business so long as you get enough customers, right? Uh, and if you get the customer's money on these terms, uh, then the investor's money will almost certainly follow should you want it and should you need it, yeah. right? But because because investors love to invest behind businesses that are getting customer money. But I, and I'll give you the best example. Take the IT services industry where I belong and Ravan belongs. From $55 million as an industry in 1988, when I co-founded NASCOM, is $250 billion today. It was all built on customer money. Because for most of our time, there was no investor money. And IPOs were a challenge, right? And it was built in very difficult times. We had a very bad, bad India brand abroad. Government policies were very unfavorable, no debt, no VC, whatever. So I think it's a very good example of what is possible. So let me pick up one piece more before we disappear, which is this flipping. <coughs> so Indian startups needing to flip and become US resident, what drives that? And A, we have now had a a case or two of companies who flipped and actually think they should flip back to India and come and list here. So, Kanwal, why don't you talk about the flipping there? 
So, why do you flip to U.S.? You know, are you being the you know, traitor to India? Or is there a rational reason to flip to U.S.? We, as an investor, require you to be a U.S. company. Even, you know, if you're an Indian company, you want our money, you'll have to flip. And, and that means you set up this thin layer of database front end without maybe any employees, an Indian entity which is a wholly owned subsidiary. And there's a very good reason for that one. You know, US tax laws are wonderful. Indian tax laws are atrocious. I was telling you know, to <laughs> Raman Rai, Raman Rai was shaking his head. Yeah, the, if you invest a million dollars into a startup in the US, which is less than $50 million on the balance sheet, when, when it, you exit, the first $10 million worth of your gains are tax free. No taxes. On the, and if you want to invest $2 million in another company, yeah, you have your, you have son's name and your daughter's name and your wife's name and you can invest, you can get $40 million worth of gains tax free. So it's $10 million per person. Per person. Per of gain, tap, capital gains free of yeah. tax. Yeah. So, so why would I invest in an Indian entity yeah, where I pay the Indian taxes and when I repatriate, I pay the U.S. taxes? You know, here I pay zero taxes. I don't pay any Indian taxes because it's a, it's a Delaware corporation and I, do, I have this qualified small business team. Just search on the Google QSBS and it will tell you. So, the, you know, the, all the employees are in India. All the salary is being paid to the Indian employees. All the IP is in the head of the Indian entrepreneurs okay. and his people. You know, yeah, some, some notional way of thinking the IP belongs to the U.S. company. But typically, Indian subsidiary is wholly owned subsidiary and IP stays there. IP does not physically move. So Indian entity has, you know, all these implies by taxes, all these, you know, but, but for, for investors, for the entrepreneurs, Indian government thinks flipping a company is a hand in time. Yeah. Yeah, there's a rational reason to do that. You know, U.S. set up customers buy from a U.S. entity without even realizing it's an Indian company masquerading as a U.S. company. <laughs> yeah, U.S. Yeah, U.S. De Defense Department has no qualms about buying from them. Yeah, so somehow we have become you know, a little strange in our thinking. Yeah, flipping. Is, is required because of the tax laws of two countries. The disparity in the tax laws of two countries is phenomenal. Yeah. So what you're saying is if you really want U.S. investors in your company, yeah. they gain a lot tax-wise if you relocate uh, your company, yeah. for sure. Or, or, yeah. or I mean, your yeah. market is in the yeah. U.S. Yeah. That's the other. Yeah. So th there is a cat and mouse game uh, that gets played. Indian government stops you from flipping. You know, big tax event. You know, we, we just did a company which was doing about a million dollars in revenue. You know, we required them to flip. They went through the process. The evaluation team was $7 million. They had to pay $3 million worth of taxes to flip. And okay, so we set up a delivery entity. We uh, set up a new Indian entity. Yeah, you know, the Indian entity sold, the old Indian entity sold its IP to the new entity for $300,000, on which we paid $100,000 in taxes. All the employees and the old company resigned, founders of the old company resigned, and they moved over to the new company as a new set of employees. The old company is defunct. Government of India can have it. There's no way you can to start a smart entrepreneur from you know, doing this. A new company being set up, it's easy to interpret in Delaware and have Indian bat office, Indian bat office. You know, and I don't know why is that a problem. You, know, you are raising capital in the US by and large. You, know, you have US set up, you know, most of the SaaS, I'm talking about most of the SaaS companies, you know, you know, 
your U.S. Your debt by and large, your, your trust was by and large in the U.S. Yeah, you appeared to them as a U.S. company, yeah, but all your employees, all your payroll, all your IP, IP is an Indian entity. Why, yeah, the, the government wants to have their pound of flesh in terms of uh, taxes. Yeah, they're not competitive. Why would I, yeah, so I don't know, I don't know, yeah. The, the flipping, almost, there's a five, six, seven billion dollars worth of SaaS industry in India right now, right? Yeah. I'll tell you, this industry will be $500 billion in another 10 to 15 years. India is where the talent is. India is where the software people are. U.S. has not enough population. Yeah. And uh, yeah, U.S. Yeah, made this silly immigration rules. So people are staying back. And yeah, they're setting up the SaaS companies out of India, where they done over front end. So. So, so Sanjeev, let me ask you the, the flip side of it. Because there are companies that are looking to flip back here and list. Flipping back? Yeah, sorry. No, look, uh, I think in the fintech space, where there's enough government regulation, you want to float an NBFC, ultimately RBI is involved. Uh, it's going to be hard for flip companies uh, to get past the RBI. Yeah. In, in, uh, yeah. No, no. Right. See, the other thing is when, uh, see, when markets are on the upswing, right? Uh, flipping looks great. When markets are not downswing, you will be stuck in no man's land. Uh, you know, and you will be stuck with a. If your company is failing, and look, startups do fail, you will be stuck with a flipped entity, which you got to service the, uh, you know, the the, the the compliances, right? So you, I mean, there are there are pluses and minuses, right? Uh, so, but in general, what I think is the government should create conditions where people don't need to flip or don't want to flip. I, I'll tell you, I can come up with a structure where I can make the company look like the Indian company, where nothing has changed to meet this, you know, uh, RBI requirements. It's very smart attorneys on both sides. They know exactly how to do to overcome the any and all legal hassles. We should have a mindset of how do we create million entrepreneurs, how do we create you know, tens of millions of jobs, how do we you know, have uh, India grow very rapidly, become the software powerhouse. Who worries you know, where this stuff is, you know, ownership is? You know, the, if the capital comes from overseas, let them make the profit. If capital comes, so make, make the Indian capital as mobile as, as US capital, is the so way the, I would put it. Okay, so there was one question which was very broad, saying what are the good sectors to look at investing in now? And the other one was also on uh, crypto. What really happened? What does it mean for Web3, whatever? <coughs> you, you know, I never understood crypto. I wrote, you know, yeah, I, I, I wrote, yeah, I, I am, I am, you know, Reasonably smart person, <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I will talk to people and who will give me ten reasons, and I will scratch my head. Why does that make sense? It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So this guy, yeah, Sam, Batman, free, right? He said yesterday, I was on, on the you know, TV. Three point two billion dollars that transferred from the FTX to his other company. He doesn't know what happened to the money. He doesn't know what happened to that three point two billion dollars. So, so yeah, I don't know. Can you create a value out of thin air? <laughs> so I I like so. See, I studied economics in college, and when I heard this crypto thing for the first time, it completely baffled me. So I went back and dug out from an old uh, carton my uh, textbook. We had a paper in second year at Delhi University <coughs> called Money, Banking, and Financial Institutions. Right? And I opened the, the textbook and I said, what's functions of money? Right? And I looked at the functions of money again and you know, characteristics of money. And I couldn't for the life of me figure out how could a currency exist without a sovereign guarantee? Right? And then this Web3 also baffled me. And this Meta baffled me. 
and you know, we've got a young investing team. They said, you're a dinosaur, you don't understand anything. I said, yeah, I'm a dinosaur, I don't understand anything, but we are not investing in these three areas until I understand it, until we all understand it, right? Mm -hmm. So we stayed away from these three areas. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you invest in it's better to have cash in the bank than to, uh, don't invest until you understand it, yeah. I don't understand cryptos, and I don't understand it. And, you know, and uh, boss, why is banking a regulated industry? Why, is, why are there currency controls? It's because of hundreds of years of experience with money that governments have had, that economies have had, societies have had, that look, you need regulation in this area. Yeah. Now, now, this guy is able to treat uh, the customers' crypto as his own money and transfer it elsewhere. I mean, that would never happen in a regular bank. Yeah. It would be regulation around it. I mean, why do you need to locate this damn thing in the Bahamas here? Yeah? Because you want to get out of regulation here. Yeah? It's a bloody scam. Yeah. Start to finish crypto is a scam. Yeah, so you look at what he did. Yeah. His uh, yeah. appearance. Oh, totally teddy bear. Yeah, 30 years old, right? Always smile on his face. The language they developed. The language they developed, you know, talk about you know, you know, this stuff, you know, as if it's something real. The, he was an effective altruistic guy, right? And he said, I will give away 99% of my assets to charity. So he had cultivated this image of me, do right, teddy bear. Yeah, he's not in it for money. His father and his mother, a law professor at Stanford. Yeah, yeah. He gave to Democrats about $20 million, and he gave to Republicans about $10 million for this last election. Testament's money. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, politicians were happy to take the money. <laughs> yeah. So I'm telling you, if it's too good to be true, it is. It's not true. Yeah, it's not true. Yeah. 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 So if it's too good to be true, it is too good to be yeah. true. And yeah. So, you know, so you, you have to. Yeah. You know, I don't think crypto is going to be bad anytime soon. So if you're planning a scam, if you're planning a scam, make make it a big one. You know then. That's one, one learning from there. Let, let me just add one more piece, because you and I will have to leave. Everybody in the business made a stand. Every one of them. Maybe there's one guy in the so my only comment is maybe it is not no, how can how can banking and currency not be regulated? Hang on, hang on. Crypto is not regulated. It is not a currency. It's a very highly risky asset class. Nothing to do with it. Asset class? What is it? Boss, there is a land, there is a sauna, there is a cattle, there is a house, there is a garden. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? This is very vaporware. It's made of asset class. 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 frequencies, right? So this is saying I have something which I don't know where I've got it from. So it, that's a problem. Let me pick up one piece. Yes. We'll do the audience uh, piece uh, later. You guys okay. So, so one thing which came saying, look, <coughs> what was it about? What are the uh, for sectors for investing? Let's pick that one up and then. I do not. I do not invest in sectors, technology, markets. I invest in entrepreneurs. I want to you know, get a feel that this guy can make me money. You know, uh, just think about it. Technology is always changing. Markets are always changing. The only constant you have through the whole process is a person that you're betting on. So, so when people ask me, uh, what sector do you favor? I am all over the map. I'm all, I want to harvest the energy, excitement of an entrepreneur I have fallen in love with. And I have found that to be very, very reliable way to do. Excellent. Just and then, to I, then I start to learn. Once I start to learn, I start to add value. You know, so I, you know, I had never done a service investment until I did the Exodus investment. You know, and you know, 
I have been in all sorts of trophies, all sorts of trophies. So that's great. You've just endorsed the IN model. <laughs> Nothing to do with sectors. <laughs> Anything that may, only what makes sense. Uh, Sanjeev? Yeah, very similar. So look, there are some boundaries. We look at consumer internet B2B SaaS tech generally. We will not do a chewing gum company, right? That's out. Okay. Uh, now, within that, we don't look at sectors. We do it bottom up. If somebody had told me he passed to sector car and the restaurant listing sector has promise, we, uh, I would say, I would laugh to him out of the room and said, Koi sinne. We would not have done Zomato. Uh, that sector did not exist. Zomato was one of the first companies doing it. Right? Uh, <coughs> we just meet entrepreneurs, founders, see what they're doing. If it, people look good and the idea looks interesting, it's showing some natural traction we might go in. Uh, compelling value proposition, which is obvious that it's got a great hook, we might go in. Uh, and that's how our two best investments, uh, Zamato and Policy Bazaar, happened. We've got about 10, 15 people in yeah, the company. Policy Bazaar was very clear value proposition, right? Policy Bazaar was very clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. India is a very underserved insurance market. Yeah, and so he's yeah, doing there, he's bringing the technology to the sector yeah, and and he's yeah, yeah, giving you. Uh, this is an old Schwab, Charles Schwab model. How do I yeah, bring a technology to an old sector? And so, yeah, so Paris Bazaar is doing very well. Yeah, yeah. When Son San did come in, yeah, David, yeah, Son San tells him, if you don't take my money, I will give it to your competition, right? Yeah, that was his threat. Yeah, it's a bit, yeah, yeah, we took his money, I, yeah, and that's long, yeah, the inventor sold half of his uh, to son son in that round. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I saw the article that Jamaro said they will lower the delivery time from 15 minutes down to 10 minutes, or something like that, right? Yeah, I'm trying to see, is that what the trust for and market really is asking and demanding? Is that how you create value there? Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. Yeah. Uber is $60 billion in revenue, has never made a dime. Never made a dime. What size they have to be before their model clicks in? Yeah. So you know, somebody talked about earlier, Uber was losing money in ride share. Money is available to them free, so let's start the Uber Eats. I'm already losing tons of money. I'm going to have a certain stream of losing money. <laughs> right? So I don't know. Uh, Uber had a model that I thought was very decent. I would have focused on making that model profitable. Yeah. So, Yamato, I am not able to get too excited. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Sanjeev is insider, so he, he knows the people. Maybe the entrepreneur is. I, did, I heard him speak, and I said, hmm. He said, I said, I said, I have to draw a lot. I said, okay, I don't know. Did, did he not say that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so look, look, when money is very easily available, abundant, uh, and this corporation is getting it, right? And you're going head to head. Uh, you know, it's about market share, not money. Or not not profits and uh, today they're cutting down the burn so every quarter they're cutting down the burn and they seem to be on track to getting to uh, a bit of break even within a few quarters yeah and, and and please understand it's a listed company he's an insider so he can't really i'm on the board he or he, he's on the board so he can't really talk too much about yeah, yeah, zomato so we probably should not talk too much about zomato but uh yeah, yeah, i should tell the passport story after you're done which which one yeah, okay. I just wanted to understand, I think of the questions you raised, I think maybe the one that's left is on SaaS, right? There was something on, is there a market for SaaS or, you know? Is the market shrinking, is the market shrinking for SaaS? Let's just pick up that one, one point. Yeah, the market will not for SaaS company at all, ever. The world is becoming, you know, the old saying, the software is eating all the industries. Yeah, and that software is coming out of India now. U.S. doesn't have the manpower. Yeah, it's not like the Indians come to U.S., so they're doing it out of here. So I would not uh, worry about putting any money into SaaS company at all, ever. 
So I want to tell you a story about Parshmart. Parshmart was joined to Publi in 2019. I had to get off the board for a variety of uh, reasons. And, and he started to lose $15 million a month. When I was there, he was losing $5 million a month. And two, three months in a row, I, I, I looked at his uh, balance. Boy, he will be out of money in seven, eight, nine months. He's going to have to do raise money. So I, yeah, this is still a private company. So I told Manish, hey, Manish, you know, I need to talk to you. I twisted his arm until he said, ouch. I said, tell out all your martyrdom. You're spending $15 million a month in martyrdom. You're losing $15 million a month. Down to zero. He says, what if my sales drop? Uh, we'll start spending. So he tell out the, you know, the $15 million a month of martyrdom. His sales did not drop. They kept going up. And all of a sudden, instead of losing $15 million a month, he was making $5 million a month in profits. Six months, uh, he had done so well, he was going to do public, uh, and now he cannot talk to me anymore because <laughs> you know, I am outsider uh, the, the, to this file. It, it was published in January of last year. I looked at his number, he's spending, he's losing $20 million, and he's spending $20 million in marketing. He went public at uh, $42. Uh, we we got out, at, uh, uh, inventors got out. Start shot up to 108, so we messed up, you know. A week later, start was down to 36, and it went down to eight. eight. You know, and, and he just sold the company at $17 a share to some Korean outfit. I went through with him. Twenty million dollars in Martin, you do you know what you're getting for the money you are spending? We just went through this process where I had, you know, forced you to touch your button down to zero. And your sales didn't drop. When you spent the more money, your sales didn't increase. Yeah. So you know, and there it was the VCs who were you know, who were telling you not to listen to me. Yeah, you know, because I'm the outsider. Yeah, I was a seed investor there. So you know, I don't know. You know. There's an old saying by Henry Ford that half of the martyrdom money I spent, I spent is wasted. You know, I wish I knew which half. <laughs> right? So we've had a company like that, where <laughs> which did very well till the next round VCs came in. So those of us who exited as angels got to close to 20x back, and some who stayed back got zero. Right off. Total write-off. Because the VCs just ramped up their cost and, the, and the company died. It's still no, no, we are, they are going no, to no, no, no. You are talking to I, I have, I have C, interview with CNBC at 5 p.m. No, it will be 5.30. I have a chat. That one is in control of most TV networks. <laughs> 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 Don't worry about that. No, no, this is India. We manage all of this stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. You have to listen to me. You have to listen to me. Yeah, let's make sure nobody needs. No tag along. Okay, so what we do considering the sort of things that we penetrated all the items that you raised when we did. But uh, what we'll do is uh, raise questions uh, directly to Anwar and uh, take whatever. He does have a hard stop in about 14 minutes. I'm giving five minutes for him to freshen up and before his interview, so we have about 40 minutes. So. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, yeah, now I have the mic. Now I can. <laughs> you talked about crypto, but what about blockchain? I don't know whether you read. I read a very interesting book, The Fall of Google, Life After Google, right? Yeah, yeah. Which it, says the end of big data that we will not be paying, you know, we are not used to free stuff. Yeah. We pay for security. So, what do you think? Blockchain is a technology. It needs to grow out and prove itself. The first time blockchain was talked about was in 2006-2007. You know, what's his name? Uh, Anderson, Martin Anderson of Anderson Horowitz. 
He said, this is going to change the world. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any and all technology has to grow out and prove itself in the marketplace. You know, customers have to be buying and getting the value out of it. It hasn't happened yet. I do not see blockchain at all. Sorry? I do not see blockchain to make anybody any money. I, I don't invest in that. I, I, I have seen uh, things that are being forced into blockchain. Yeah. Where I've asked a question, but you could do this without blockchain, what yeah. value is it? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it saying, is sexy to go into blockchain right yeah, now, yeah. and I think that sexiness time is also over. But yeah, I think it has been around 16 years. It has to it, it has to prove itself. It has to prove itself. It, it, it does something that no other technology can do. That hasn't happened yet. IBM, bad bit on a blockchain. Yeah, so we'll see, yeah. That you say that you're not investing in technology at a hard core in your mindset. I am not You're investing in entrepreneur. Do you also prioritize becoming an entrepreneur, uh, the target segment like B2C, B2G, or B2B? Is there any yeah. priority? Because so, so, my current approach is investments a year. And we, we, our current uh, funding is for four years. So 32 tapis. Yeah. So we have enough dry powder to cover every sector. You know, I, I, yeah, I yeah, we turn back. We, there's a massive deal flow. Entrepreneurs come and present. Uh, and yeah, do we want to invest in that? Yeah. Lots of good, good ideas. Yeah. Lots of good entrepreneurs. But we are only going to invest in eight companies a year. We have this mathematical approach to investing. I talked about, you know, we put $3 million with $7 million pre-money valuation. You know, where I want to be able to bid 40 years my money, and I'm going to have a portfolio of 32 companies. And you know, we are nearly halfway into that one. 14, 15 companies we have done. You know, another 16, 17 will have to be done. And uh, I am not ideological in my, I need to do this and I need to do that. I, yeah, we take the, yeah, think that's the term. Entrepreneurs, yeah, if I get, I, I fall in love with an entrepreneur, we'll do the deal. So let me ask a follow-up question, it's linked. So while the question was, how do you choose the sectors? Let me spin it around. You're already invested in a particular sector and you get a competing company or somebody in the same sector, how do you evaluate that? Do you say, no, I'm not doing it, or is there? So, so we are a seed, pre-seed level investor. Yeah, we are going to do 32 investments uh, to have a diversified portfolio. Yeah, so we want to have as many different sectors as possible. And so, if I have done a sector and maybe another entrepreneur, we love him, yeah, we probably will do it. Yeah, yeah. The, there are four of us in our, in our team, and we have flipped the investment model. If any of us loves the entrepreneur or wants to do the deal, we do the deal. We don't have to build consensus in our team. Yeah. If I want to deal, the other three will support it. One of them wants to do the deal. And uh, yeah, the partners are very smart people. Yeah. B.B. Jagadish, how many of you know B.B.? Yeah, Raju Reddy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, my, and my daughter, Rajan. Four of us are the Silicon Valley Quad. And, uh, and we have an uh, associate with us, uh, Shitin, yeah, who, help, who helps uh, yeah, right there. Yeah. And yeah, so we are doing deals. I'm not ideological. We are paying the risk today. We need to have a diversified portfolio. We give enough uh, power to the entrepreneur to get somewhere in 18 to 24 months. And, and our margin hours are let's define the financeable milestones that you should pursue. Yeah, we will build it up in there. Yeah, our goal is to get to a place where other guys will find us attractive to invest.
Very, very much possible. Very much possible. Very much possible. See, that's even, it all depends on early revolution. If you give up, if you will like, we'll come to you. If you do a high revolution, as the revolution grows up, the chances of maybe four years grow down. I just wanted to start with a comment. Just my one thought on blockchain. I don't know if you have comment on that, but whatever I felt is the only application I can see for the technology is for an application which is cross legal boundaries, like multi-country jurisdiction applications, with a large transaction bill. So the transaction cost, you know, maybe like cross-country shipping, cross-country property, or something like that. I don't know if that's how it will play out. But that is just a thing that comes to my mind as a probable application. Yeah, blockchain is supposedly a secure contract. Yeah. I mean, I know all the benefits of blockchain. Yeah, why is it not taken? So, I, my question was, with all the question about the power of 2627, how does it affect the investing world? What's your view? Is it, change, is it an impact to where things are going in the stock market? I think they are going to be more disciplined. I think the value should the biggest fool has dis you know, disappeared. You know, the reason I gave that quote about a tiger and stuff, and the senior partner of Tiger said in an interview on CNBC in the US, we are out of the VC business because that ecosystem is broken. I said, who brought the damn ecosystem? <laughs> you know, you guys were the bull in China shop. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, I think uh, when the winter sets in, the fear of God comes, you know, the expectations moderate. Yeah. Lots, of, lots of people, young people, do you know, particularly Harvard MBA, you know, who were the you know, VCs, you know, they, uh, they were given the charge to do get that thousand hours. Yeah. And uh, we'll see, we'll see. a seed investor or a pre-seed investor. You've made it clear sector doesn't matter. It's the people you invest behind. So let's assume that you meet an entrepreneur who you really love, <clears throat> right? And you want to invest. How, and there's, it's a pre-seed, so it's largely pre-revenue or just, just about so It's pre-revenue, pre-product. Pre-product, pre pre-revenue. How do you decide the valuation? I told, you, I told you, we have formulated in our approach. We give you $3 million for 30% of the company. That's it. That's it. And how do you decide when to exit? How do you decide at what valuation or when to exit? Well, you have done that yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so. Because you told me that what you want is you want to exit. So, because you told me once that when you take an exit, it's a new transaction and you need to evaluate it whether you would have invested at yeah, that that's price. Later, that's right? what you taught me. Yeah, that's clear. So if you invest in the company and you've done really well, policy bazaar. Yeah. I have to make a decision if I hold policy bazaar shares. If I was a new investor coming into the marketplace, would I be investing in policy bazaar? Now or not? The answer is no. Then why the hell am I holding the shares that I bought earlier? Yeah. So I, we sold Policy Bazaar as soon as we, you know, when Son Son came in, there was a pretty big step up, 10, 11 times. We sold half our shares. I you say, know, you know, I don't want to you know, do the in the tango with Son Son. You know, let's take about 10, you know, you know, half the money and run. When they went public, yeah, you know, we sold all the shares uh, we could at $1,400. I just mentioned that earlier. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't sell. And now the thing became opened up to sell. Start price was down to 350 We sold half our remaining shares at 350 At $350? Yeah. Yeah, would I buy at that price? The answer was no. So, so now we have kept yeah, that three, yeah, one eighth of our original holding. Let it ride. I am not a dreamy I guy. I do not like to fool myself. Yeah. Which yeah. is very tough to do. You don't want to fight mathematics. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. Just a comment, uh, Carlos. I mean, don't you think a VC 
Western bankers uh, need to be tied for you know leading the general public? Absolutely. I think they should be sued. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will banker spat you. The banker spat you. I told you how the IPO are done. I need to do market. I need to have enough demand at that price for two to three at some shares I'm offering. I need to discount 10 to 15 percent of that. So start floats up. And if everybody who was due to start at the IPO sells, there's enough demand there to fit up. Yeah. The banters knew that wasn't the case. We have to, you know, since then, you know, sort of admitted. But Vijay Shetty Sharma said, if you don't want to do it with me, I'll find the next banker. Yes. Which as you know that, but the other banker who made present met some of those people and they're chewing their nails because they might get appointed because the other guy may not do it. And they are willing to give unreasonable terms. Yes. Yes. One of the problems is that there's always somebody who's going to step up and say, I'll, yeah, I, I, the IPO dies with 6 to 7 percent. The banters were 6 to 7 percent. But that, this happened in Facebook, isn't it? Right? Huh? In, in Facebook, the same thing happened at IPO, right? Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the Facebook went public at $19 this year. I, it came back down to about 14 15 uh, and then it went up to about 400, 500, but two, uh, two years later. Yeah, yeah. So time value of money, yeah. If uh, the point that, if I think that price is good, I should buy at that price, I will. Uh, and I don't want to hold on to an asset, I won't be buying at that price. Yeah, every time you hold on to asset, you're making a decision to buy at that price. Because if you didn't sell, right? Yeah, that's the same as yeah, buying, right? So you spoke about the funding and so your sense is that value should make the right? But if you draw an analogy to the 98 to 2000, 2009, what's your sense of how far along are we in that winter? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. What are the things you ask yourself? The Federal Reserve. Yeah. If they raise the rates, another half percent. There will be twenty percent drop in the start price. They have brought the inflation down from eleven percent down to seven and a half percent in the US. Yeah, seven and a half percent is very high inflation. In the door is to two to four percent. So so they cannot put a put on the gas pedal. Yeah, they are easing up the brake, but they cannot ease much either. So so we'll see. But here is the fly in the ointment. Twenty twenty four is election year in the US. Twenty twenty four is election in India. Politicians will try bloody murder if the effects Tighten too much money. Who cares about inflation? I need to win the election. Yeah. Right? So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So you decide whether you want to play the game or you want to sit out. So let me flip it. So let's say that if the reserve says we stop raising this, the radio or the series, don't worry. If the party starts again, if they stop raising the rates, or you will raise at the lower rate, the party will shoot up. So you think the party will just start again saying that this is more The party will start again. What can you do Any, we still have some time, folks. We have about 20 minutes. Questions? Uh, follow up. Anything, thoughts on the uh, clean tech, COP26, COP27, all these discussions sure. around Climate technology is, well, how does that affect the startup world? Or is it more for uh, the Exxon than the uh, bigger companies? Well, for yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah. You know, we need to save the planet, but not on, on my nature. Not on my nature. 
Okay, I'll let the CSR money draw, I'll let the government money draw. Unless, unless you can prove that technology, the clean tech technology, yeah. Yeah, go, go try and, and see if it sells. Everybody who went to clean tech, green tech in 2000 lost their shirt. Everybody, including Vinod Prosla. So this is not new. You know, this will be done by government passing laws to force the issue rather than individual investors making decisions on their own. I want to save the planet, I'll go invest in saving the planet. No, no, I want to come back and say, can I make 48 years or not? I'm, I'm pretty trash. Right. You know, good companies. So, so let me give you a couple of ways to think about the, how much capital do you need? The capital from VC is the most expensive. It's like selling your blood. It's selling your blood you know, to, to survive. If you have a widget that you can produce at 50 rupees, and you're able to sell at 100 rupees, there's a posi positive unit in the of $50. Yeah. Every time I sell a widget, I make 50 rupees. Meanwhile, I have built up the R&D, sales, marketing, adoration of, let's say, you know, 10 to roll. So if I sell a widget I, and I make 50 rupees, you know, I say 10 to roll divided by 50, 20 lakhs. 20 lakhs. I need to sell 20 lakhs. Just but, to break even? Yes, to overturn my, my overhead. And now I, I say, what is my CAC? How much does it cost me to acquire that one customer? You know, yeah, maybe it cost me 100 rupees, 50 rupees to uh, acquire that as well. Based upon your CSC, you say, I need to be able to get 20 lat. Yeah. So, you know, so that's the capital that you need. But that's if you're, it not, you know, unit economy is positive. But so let's, yeah, don't do it a bit further. If you toss, uh, your toss is 90 and you sell it 100, same thing. I made 10 rupees, and I have the same task of goods. Now I have to sell one to roll. You know, widgets to make my 10 to roll back. So if your margin goes thinner, I have to do a lot more of selling. Yeah. So, so based upon your CAC, yeah, the, the LTV, yeah, the long-term value of a given customer, if you spend a hundred dollars to acquire a customer, it took you two years to recoup the hundred dollars you spend because you make 50, if you buy one unit each per year. If you buy two units each per year, you, you, know, you, know, you dodge your money back within a you know, year. If you sell four, you know, four units you know, to a customer that you acquire, so it starts to become a very simple math. What's my CSC? What is my LTV? LTV is typically computed over three years. You know, if I spend hundred rupees and I dodge 300, 400 rupees back within three years, I should invest, keep raising money and put in, in that business all day long. If I you know, spend 100 you know, rupees to you know, acquire a customer and it takes me four years, five years to get my 100 years back, I would need tons of capital to break even. That's what's happening to these guys. You can raise billions of dollars and show the growth but you're not going to ever make money. Ma uh, math is very, uh, uh, like I said, uh, we are, we are you know, smart Indians. You cannot fight math beyond a point. But don't the easy VC money has really vitiated the... Oh, yeah. <coughs> no, actually, yeah, that, 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 that's what he said. That's, uh, if you read that yeah, interview I gave to... Yeah, yeah, mint and, and to money, money control. Money control. I said these are the culprits. You know, they are the bad. Because too many businesses losing money. The transporters have made so much money that the whole model has got vitiated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
their model and fairness to them, their model is of a different maths. <coughs> their model is even if so. For three succeed, 40 X, I made my no, money, I got my yeah, carry. Yeah, their model is that I will find, I, I will find a better fool to bail yeah. me out. And a better fool was, was never the, a retail buyer. And they, they are treat, you know, treating the retail buyer as a better fool. No, there are a lot of entrepreneurs who their head up. But actually, I mean, they never built a business. I mean, it's all money losing, which again has been passed on and passed on and passed on. Yeah, that's a topic we'll talk about. Yeah. I, I very strongly feel that institutions are not being built. They, 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 only short term transient yeah. things are being yeah. built. But that's you, a. You hold your head high <coughs> because you think you're smart like that. So it's not giving you money. And, and, and giving more money, doing something right. So I, I don't blame these guys. You know, you know, they're taking the money at high valuation, so they must have, you know, you know they say, hey, we are dark, dark, we're doing so, so, so well, and this guy is giving us the money. Folks, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Because, you know, our Indian market is still, uh, you know, on its way to mature, especially I'm talking about the listed space. Like in US, we have NASDAQ for, uh, you know, a lot of technology companies. In India, we still don't yet have a dedicated exchange, you know, for appreciating the technology stocks differently from the traditional ones. So my question is more specific to how do you see a roadmap which can become more conducive for these, like, not so, you know, near profit-making companies, which can get appreciated by investors who can, you know, invest in the ecosystem and not necessarily keep them at par in terms of metrics for traditional companies. Because, you know, if you see last one or two years, we've seen companies in the technology space which IPO and we've discussed in the last one hour also. Couple of them, you know, faltered uh, because of, let's say, the nexus of bunch of bankers, looking at the promoters, whatever the expectation was. And uh, in the absence of guys like, you know, Samsung and uh, Tigers, we saw IPO becoming the bigger pool, like the retail investors. <coughs> yeah. The retail investors bailing out. Yeah, maybe the, the, the yeah. Uh, retail bar. Yeah. Uh, as it was gone, gone history. It burned several times. So the people were coming in there, yeah, and you have all this, you know, site like Reddit and all that, you know, where there's a massive debate that takes place. So there's a more robust setup there. In India, yeah, some of these investors are the first time investors. Yeah, yeah. so the government of India loves to have unicorns. Yeah. I saw, I saw the U. I mean, Indian Council General in Houston <coughs> put up a slide in Dallas about two, three weeks ago, giving how many unit terms we have in India. It's, in it's an often used slide. The Indian diplomat. So, so he's telling about how well we are doing. We are producing so many unit terms. So. You no, know, but the, 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 that is, it is because of lack of understanding. If everybody talks of unicorns, they pick it up and no, they... No, I, I am sure that that diplomat is using very standard... Yeah, it is. It is very standard. Yeah, it's it's a, a prime minister downwards, yeah. we talk of yeah. unicorns. So, uh, so there's the one question I'll ask, then I'll come to you. So, Kanwal, you, from seed stage, they get to series A, series B. And then, rather than just an exit of an IPO, et cetera, there could be a M&A. Yeah, there could be an acquisition. So talk to us which way you look at it for the investor, yeah. the role the investor yeah. has to play for M&A yeah, and for the founder. 90% of the exits in the US are through M&A. Yes, yes. 90% so of the exits. Investor role and such. Yeah. Well, you cannot force an entrepreneur to exit unless he wants to exit, right? And you cannot force an entrepreneur to stay if he wants to exit. So most of this stuff is run by entrepreneur. Uh, you know, so who knows the best? You know, who knows the best entrepreneur? You know, whether this is a... So if we had a company called Red Bus, I don't know how, you know, how many of you remember. That company was doing $10 million in revenue 
was making about a million, million and a half in profits, had $9 million in the bank, had less than 5% penetration in the, in the marketplace. Entrepreneur panicked, there might be a depression, a recession, and I will lose all the money I'm going to make. I could not convince him, you know, hey, this, you have a company which is drawing 100% year on year, which is profitable. You have $9 million in the bank. Yeah, you have profit, yeah, why do you want to sell? What if there's a recession and depression? There's, you have $9 million in the bank, you are profitable. You know, people have to ride buses, go to school, and the weddings, you know, it's not, it's not, yeah. We sold that company, because he did not want to run. Yeah, yeah, he, he got very worried about losing a small time entrepreneur in the way, right? He got very worried, you know, I was pulling my hair. Hey, the temporary, so we sold that, yeah, almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. He already made $10 million. We sold the temporary for, for about yeah, $100 million. We made a huge amount of money because we were seed investors. And we made 15, 20 times our money. And I kept saying, he kept saying, you're making 20 times your money, why are you worried? I want to make 200 times my money. I want to make 1,000 times my money. Uh, he said, you know, you're being greedy. I said, yeah. When you have a company which is emerging like a winner, you stay with it. If it's losing money, if it's not growing, I will have a different attitude. It's growing 100%, it's profitable, has $9 million in the bank, I don't see any downside risk. Yeah. So that company that acquired by Made My Trip, mm -hmm. yeah, one of the most successful acquisitions by Made My Trip. Yeah, we, we have grown like almost 20 fold in the last five, six years. Yeah, seven years, yeah, we sold. Yeah, this entrepreneur said, ah, I will do my next company bid. I want to get $10 million and secure my future. The 27, 26 year old kid. I said, every opportunity is different. Yeah, you may never have a company like this ever again. It's been six, seven years, he has tried three companies, none of them has done anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I made. Entrepreneur decides. So, yeah. the so more public Wafe has this ratio of GDP to market cap. Yeah, he says anything over 100 is over value. US is trading at about 140%, India trading at 105. So, does that mean. I, I, I am not an expert in the public markets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am a startup senior investor. I simply want to make more than money, money, five percent. Just another, on the recent scenario where the valuations of the new fundraise is a lot of times happening at around which is lower than what has happened. So while we spoke about you know earlier the fundraise was actually the money just flowing in, so that's where the valuation was also stretched first. Yeah. Yeah. How do you see that? Yeah. Is it a yeah, the old Hindi say, Vati Dandavet, Asho. That's what was happening, right? So would you, would you advise your companies to you know, take the money even though it could be a down round? Down round? Down round? Oh, if you have no choice but to get the money, you know, then you get back to survival, right? Yeah, if you, yeah, if you need the money to survive, you need the money to survive. Yeah, if entrepreneur says, I would not take a down round and you will go down with this boat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine too, right? Most of the entrepreneurs are smart people. Yeah, yeah, they know, yeah, they screwed up. They didn't create value. And, and the variations is not going to draw up. Variations draw up when you do something some methods start to show, I got a proven product, I have 20, 30, 40 customers, I'm starting to see revenue. Yeah. If it's not happening, yeah. And by the way, even in public markets, the your valuation depends upon the market multiples. Yeah, yeah right, yeah, but the, I do know that much. Market multiples, you have nothing, no control over that. They are driven by the availability of money. All right.
So the 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 sad part of what I'm seeing in the marketplace, and Saurabh gave the example of a company. I'm one of the investors who lost money because half of my stake I stayed invested. Is the VCs drive them to continue spending even after a down round? And I'm seeing that in some of the companies yeah. I'm invested yeah. in. To so, say, so, so, so. <laughs> before you do the down round. No, no, you see, uh, the entrepreneurial talent play innocent. You know, at some place, you have to use your own brain. <laughs> brain. brain. Unless I didn't need any brain. Money. They just don't <coughs> want to reduce. And the offense is not coming down and they are doing a down down. Yeah, but why do it? Why not first reduce your bond? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we have all kinds of people out there. That's true. <laughs> yeah, they want to have the money for the True that, true that. <laughs> See, you know, the best you can do. Yeah, is the uh, right that would have, uh, the, the opportunity to sell. Like I said, you know, we sold in the round when uh, SoftBank came in. By the way, yeah, we sold our passport shares. They came public at 42. Yeah, we sold yeah, as well as we, uh, we could. I think uh, uh, yeah, our, we distributed to our, our investors around 42, 43, uh, and yeah. Start at shot up to one hundred eighty. Everybody said, "Why are you doing that one?" And then it went down to below ten. Yeah, the I, you know, if they, the die is a foolish die, there's not much you can do, right? Yeah, unfortunately, your money just didn't work. Yeah, yeah. No, the, so, so, so. They are having a similar meeting in a, another building. And saying they are so stupid, our investors, and they they don't see yeah, yeah, the yeah. opportunity. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so 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 what happens is, uh, it, <laughs> you had a question. Yeah. We have uh, about six minutes. Let me go minimum. From your personal experience, uh, as a as an investor, if you allowed a hundred for your equity, what percentage would you put on major investments? So. I, I, am, I am not a public market investor. Yeah, so I, yeah, so I have given my public market investor for your to event manager. And my instruction to him is, I don't want to... Yeah, yeah, play defensively. And, and I invest in this, all my money will be made in startups that I invest in. And that helped me case. 10 to 20 percent of my wealth you know, goes into this, this investment. 90, 80 to 90 percent stays safe. With the and wealth I, manager. I have, I have no more case. My, my house is free and clear. I had zero debt. Yeah, I yeah, use cash to buy cars. I use cash to buy everything. I have zero debt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At 77, my thing is, I want to live out peacefully. I am doing this investment as a intellectual exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am still smart enough to do play this game. So, folks, uh, many more intellectual exercises to you. And well, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. This was a delightful. At my age, I cannot be. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's my duty to make sure my wife and I can live out the rest of our life. You know, we, you know, we are both 77. You know, we want to live out over years. You know, if we end up doubling entrepreneurial wealth, it has zero impact on our quality of life. Thanks, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you.